There's a lot of great miniatures in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, so I wanted to rank what I would call centerpieces or the more unique larger miniatures, and I may have even included some of my own personal favourites as well. So I've, I've made this tier list myself. It's called Ranking Best 40k Miniatures. If you want to go onto the tier maker, tier lists are obviously very popular on YouTube and I enjoy watching tier lists as well. Um, if you did want to have a go at doing this tier list yourself, you can go on you can go onto that website. After the stream, I'll leave a link to this tier list in the description. I wanted to sort of decide once and for all which is the best, but you can't. It's all very subjective. Uh, when it comes to what miniatures people like, this is very much based on my opinion. But I did sort of lay some ground rules. I made sure to pick a miniature from each faction and I wanted it to be a miniature that would be considered to be the centerpiece for an army, whether collecting or using it in a game. Wow. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go through each miniature as we go along. So here are the different levels. So instead of having like S tier, A tier, B, C, D, I'm not necessarily and want to rank them against each other but I thought let's decide what makes what would make the miniature worthy at the top we've got collector faction because of it and for me this is you see this miniature and it's so good that it sort of changed your mind about a faction and it's now something you want to collect collect just so you can use it alongside this um, centerpiece miniature the next one is it's kind of the same thing but you just have to have it you don't, you don't need to collect an army to have it, you just want it. Then it's, after that, it's great for painting, like if you want a project. You don't necessarily just want to have it, but you want to enjoy painting it. After that, we've got, it looks cool. So at this point, you don't even necessarily have to buy it, but it's now an opinion, you say, oh yeah, it looks great. And then down here, it's just like, meh, I'm not fussed. So we've definitely all, well, for me, I've definitely gone through all these sort of feelings about a miniature and I think it's a great way to sort of judge a miniature by. So the first miniature up is Reboot Gulliman or Reboot A Gulliman. I mean this is actually this is quite an old miniature so I feel it's quite unfair but it definitely did pave the way for the Primark miniatures. I have owned a Gulliman and it was a lot of fun to paint. I just feel like it's I feel like if they made a new Gulliman they would make it at least 10 times nicer than this. It deserves to be in Collector Faction because of it when it originally came out. But since then, it's definitely dropped down. So for me, I would probably go, it looks cool. As I say, when he first came out, just for the impact that he had, having a Primark return back to the 40K universe brought back the popularity of Ultramarines. But I think over time as more miniatures came out it's just a look it looks cool and it would be great for painting but i just don't think anyone really enjoys painting all that trim so the next is mephiston which the paint is named after so this is the sort of the main special character for blood angels and i have got Don dante on this list after and there's a reason for that for me he's a great for painting because i think he he has what reboot gulliman doesn't have and that's a lot of interest in details and variety you've got all the cloth and the capes so i think that'd be a one that's great for painting and i think for some people as well it's um, a collector faction because of it so yeah i think Mephist mephiston is definitely a great for painting it's definitely not a miniature i feel that i need to have and it doesn't want to make me collect a blood angel army but if I had a Blood Angel army, I'd definitely want one. Next up is Dante. Now I've obviously made, I've done a painting tu tutorial for Dante and that's kind of why I wanted him on here. And I think again, he's he's definitely a great for painting because of the non-metallic metal. And I think any painter would do well of picking one of these up and giving that technique a go. A lot of Space Marine characters are like this. They're great for painting, but they're not necessarily interested enough that you want them because they're so generic in details. So next up is Lionel Johnson. He's, he's going to be straight to Collective Faction because of it. He's definitely must have and he's great for painting. And the Dark, a the Dark Angel miniatures are all amazing as well. And you can't just have Lionel Johnson as own. He does need the Dark Angels around him. When you go from how Robert Gulliman 
looks to Lionel Johnson. There's definitely a, a big difference. So the next miniature. So this is a personal preference for me, and that's Araman. When I first started the hobby, Zinch were my favourite faction. And I love this miniature just because it pays homage to the old metal miniature. And I think for me, it's, it doesn't make me want to collect an army of Thousand Sons. It is a miniature that I'm, I do want just for nostalgia reasons. So yeah, for Araman for me, is definitely a must have. Um, I haven't got him yet, but he's on my list of miniatures that I am definitely want. I don't know why I didn't put Khan the Betrayer on here. But I think because Araman is a very personal choice. Because Magnus is obviously the Thousand Suns choice for centerpiece. Um, I think Magnus, for me, is in the same league as Red Boot Gulliman. It looks cool. So I know Magnus is probably a controversial choice. It does look cool. I just, it's not very exciting. Magnus came out after Red Boot Gulliman. So I think. Maybe it is just because of age and maybe the limitations of the technology at the time. Mortarian. I think the reason Magnus is quite low down is because of this guy. Do you know what? Mortarian does belong at, at, at the top because it sets a bar for the other Chaos Primarchs. And it's so full of character and interest and you can do so much with it. And not only is it great for brush painting but I think it lends well to airbrushing as well I just think they did an amazing job and again I think that's why it drops Magnus down I think if these two Primarchs didn't exist these would be higher up um, Abaddon the Despoiler or Abaddon I do think Abaddon is a must have miniature just because of the lore he's such an iconic miniature and character in Warhammer 40,000 and he's, he's really great to paint as well. You can see theme here, and I think I've just got a bias because Chaos were the faction that I chose to collect when I first came into the hobby. It's definitely more of a nostalgia kick for me, but I enjoy these miniatures as well, just to have them in my collection. And I love the stature and the size of Abaddon as well, because he's got some real presence. Next up, you've got the Chaos, a Chaos Knight. I've not, I've not had this miniature, You'll see that I've got a knight down here. And I feel like this is kind of on the, on the same level. I would put this in. For me personally, it looks cool. I think the Imperial one's going to go up higher. But for the Chaos one, I don't feel the urge to paint it. Again, when you're painting a large model, it can affect the enjoyment you have. I think it would just... Kind of halfway through, the, there's too many metals and I'd kind of lose interest in it too quickly. So that's why I would pull it in looks cool over great for painting just because i'd lose interest halfway through next up is the fourth primark i think he would go higher but the fact that bloodthirsters exist kind of takes away the novelty of how he looks and this is a very impressive miniature and it looks amazing and that's why he do deserves a spot great for painting but i don't think as a miniature it has enough uniqueness to make me want him or collect an army because of him but i would love to paint one i think he's a more interesting than magnus personally i don't know it's again this is very subjective but it's a very it's a huge he's a huge miniature and has a lot of presence i would just like to have seen less bloodthirster and more angron and i know like in the lore he is just a big demon bloodthirster primark but they could have done something more closer to Mortarian. I think if they made him more unique, it probably would have went into Collector Faction because he is the most recent Primark. If you're enjoying this video, then make sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments. It really helps and it shows YouTube you're enjoying the content and they'll show it to more people. As well, I want to say a massive thank you to all the supporters of Tabletop Ready who enable me to make all these tutorials and content here on the channel. It really means a lot. Flash gits. They're only going up there because they're my favourite unit for Orcs. And that's why they're in this, this tier list. I know they're not a centrepiece, but they are for me. And my goal one day is to, is to have a Flash gits army. And because I want to collect an army of just the Flash gits, they, they deserve it to collect a faction because of it. Um, Gazgall. 
I've got a love-hate relationship with Gazgol. I think Gazgol is great for painting. Oh, do you know what? No, he's going to go up to I must have it just because of the character who he is and the lore behind him. He's definitely worth having in your collection for that. And he's a, he's a really fun miniature to paint as well. But I don't think he's quite a miniature that you'd want to collect an Orc army for. I think Orcs just have enough nice miniatures in the range. Yeah, so that's quite surprising to be fair. That I would have thought Gazgol would have been a bit higher for me, but it's definitely a must-have miniature. But just, just for the lore and background and my nostalgia, he's definitely a must-have it. So next up we have the Avatar of Kane. So this is a new updated miniature based on the old metal one, which they should have done a long time ago, but they've done such a good job with this miniature. It's going in great for painting. So I don't because when I think of it is a must have i think more unique characters but it's really it's something especially if you're collecting and painting an aldari army it's a great sort of change up to how you normally paint any other miniatures with the the kind of effects you can paint with the like the magma and the flames and the heated up metal i think it'll be a great painting project just like dante great for painting but just because he's not a unique character this is another sort of personal include in the in the range. This is the Wraith Knight. For me, still to this day, this is one of the reasons I want to do an Aldari army. It's so I can have a I can use and build and paint a Wraith Knight. But I think it just ticks all the boxes. It's a great unit in a collection. It's a really impressive miniature on the table. It's huge, it's impressive. And it definitely makes me want to collect well it is making me want to collect an Aldari army which are which is the next 40k army I, I'm gonna start actually that I haven't already got miniatures for this Astra Militarum character I think he's Solar Leontus there's the, the Imperial Guard are obviously very generic and there's a lot of infantry models and a lot of vehicles and there isn't really any sort of standout unique miniatures like a Primark for example so this sort of lack presence on the table just in size. I don't think he quite fits the I must have it. But honestly, I think it'll be great for painting. How many horses do you get to paint in 40k? Yeah, he's, he's definitely got a very empire, sort of like a really heroic and stoic character on a horse. Kind of like, I guess, a very Sigmarish sort of character for 40k. Um, and just because of its uniqueness in the range i think it deserves a spot for great for painting because you're painting all the vehicles and all the infantry pretty much exactly the same so when you get an opportunity to paint this guy um it's going to be a real treat next up i wanted to include this as well this is going up here for the same reasons the wraith knight is up there when you think of tanks this is kind of like what you would think of they've made like the tankiest the most imperial guard tankiest tank this has got so much character built into it and it's a great size as well and it stands out on the tabletop so if you had like two or three of these even better it's great to build a force around them it looks so fun to paint as well and i do have an ambition to paint one of these for the channel still it's one of the reasons i would i would want to collect acadian armies just so i could have three of these on the table because i want to paint three of them again because it's just got so much character i know it's not unique but it's definitely a standout miniature it's something different from all the previous Astra Militarum vehicles that you've been getting. It's just a nice change. The Norn Emissary for the Tyranids. This is this has to go up here as well. The Tyranid army that I'm working on now. Because obviously I started with the Leviathan box set. But I want to expand the collection just so I can include one of these. If you were to go to Games Workshop and they said... What would you like to see from the Tyranid range? This is pretty much what you would describe. The Tyranid range is very formulaic in the way that they've got, all got six limbs um, and it's they're very easy to identify. But the Norn Emissary and its sort of variation with the, the toxic version of this, there's enough about it that's different to make it interesting. So, this, so these kind of units here just tick all the boxes for me. I want to collect it. I'm, it's a must-have. I want to paint it. And it's something I want to collect a, a faction for. The Psychophage. This is a great for painting for me. And this is probably my most favourite Tyranid tutorial that I've done so far. 
it stands out enough in the Tyranid range with this huge sort of abdomen at the back. It's really fun to paint because there's so many interesting details. You've got the smoke on the top. The carapace is large enough as well to get some real nice sort of detail in. So you even get an opportunity to paint the Space Marine arm. So I just think all round it's a great, great painting project. Um, and Tyranids are just great to paint as well because they're more organic rather than industrial like a Space Marine. So there's less hard edges. So you have to learn to sort of highlight your miniature differently and bring out those features in a different way than you would a Space Marine. Um, Called so this is the Mechanicus main character. I'm not a huge fan of the Mechanicus miniatures. For me, he's he's not. I'm not bust about painting him or owning him because he's he came out exactly when Red Bute Gunman came out. So maybe it's just the age of when he came out but at the time it was a great miniature but i just think there's nicer miniatures especially with the recent horus heresy release kind of gets pushed back a lot would i ever am i ever going to own one of these maybe um, i know there's a huge fan base for this faction it's just personally not one of my favorites and that's why he suffers just from personal opinion i just wouldn't be excited about painting him i'd be more ex excited about painting the new horus heresy range this is the special character for the Custodes. Some of these miniatures on here are on here because there's no other miniature that is that exciting, which shows that probably Games Workshop needs to add to the range. I think Custodes is one of them because it's a very generic looking range of miniatures and they're all, this, they're all the same. There's not even really a nice Custodes vehicle. I'm not counting Forge World miniatures, I'm only counting the plastic. Um, so that's why... Um, so he's just more of a token for me. But you've painted one Custode, you've kind of... You've painted all of them really. It's not that exciting. So it has to go into, I'm not really that fussed about owning him. Um, I hope people sort of agree with me about these miniatures here. There's just nothing that exciting about them. They're very similar to the rest of the ranges that they're a part of. And that's why they're kind of in not first because they they do look cool but there's nothing unique about them an imperial knight um for me i'm gonna this has to go in great for painting it's almost a must-have and the reason i've chosen this imperial knight over like the larger version of it the silhouette just looks a lot better the smaller the, the smaller knight just has a nicer silhouette and i haven't put in that the plastic version the forge world miniature because for me that's still a forge world miniature and this represents the imperial knights better i just love the silhouette and i i think i'd really enjoy building it and posing it as well and i think it has great presence on the table um i'm actually going to move this up to a must have because talking about it i'm definitely going to get one even if i don't have an army for it i'd want one on my shelf and i definitely want to have one for painting but just to have one but I think next year I'm finally going to build and paint one for the channel. But yeah, I'm I'm happy if I to move that up to I must have. Um, but I'll, I wouldn't want to collect an army of them. Uh, next up is the main is a, a character for the Sisters of Battle. I'm not I can't remember the name of this character. Thank you, Grafhex Triumph of Saint Catherine. But I do love this miniature just because it's more of a diorama than a miniature, and it's it's definitely it would definitely be. A, a great project for painting it'll be a great project for painting multiple miniatures in a diorama type setting rather than an individual miniature because i know that it's like a casket and you've got all like the the flower details in it as well so i think it would just be a really great project to do um, regardless of whether you're gonna use in the game or not i don't think it's a must have but it's definitely a great project for painting uh, this next one is a token miniature for the Agents of the Imperium. Again, I don't think they've fleshed out the Agents of the Imperium range to really sort of be able to sort of compete in this, this tier list. But this is probably me, to be fair, it, it would be a nice miniature to paint just because of the uniqueness in details. So yeah, that one there, I think it'll be fun to paint. But if I, if I got round to it, the Necron Monolith 
I've put this on the list just because it's an iconic unit to have. If I was painting Necrons, and I probably would in the future, I think it is a must have, but only if you're collecting Necrons. For anyone generally, um, I think it's it can only really go into it looks cool. Yeah, the, the monolith, I think it deserves a spot and it looks cool. So I don't think it's a must have for most people, only if you're collecting Necrons. And I don't think it'd be that interesting to paint just because of um, this guy who someone's gonna have to tell me his name it's but this is probably probably collector faction because of it the silent king thank you very much i do apologize there's a lot of miniatures and i forget things so the silent king is an amazing miniature it's a great project to paint again it's kind of like the same thing as having a diorama there's more than just the character going on with it with his throne and the things that are floating around him and you can use so many different techniques so it's definitely a miniature that would make anyone want to collect that faction um, and it's definitely a miniature that i want to build up to when i eventually get around to painting some necrons so it definitely deserves a spot in a collector faction because of it the next miniature again it's kind of a token miniature for me for the drukari which is another thing that surprised me is that actually there's not much in the Drukari range and could probably do with an update. It should at least get the same kind of love the Aldari range is getting, which is unfortunate. But this is this is a really nice miniature and I think it would be great for painting. But again, it's a miniature that is too similar to a unit that already exists, the Incubi. Uh, the next one, so we earlier the Tau box, you've got a ghost kill and I was saying this is my favorite battle suit. And it still is and because of that it's the reason i want to collect a tau army just so i can have three of these and i think it does a better job of being a towel the aesthetics and what i think a towel suit should look like over the other units just because of the again the um the silhouette yes yeah, so that's why the ghost kill is up here just because the aesthetic is better than all the other suits in the range um the storm surge this isn't here because it's meant to be the centerpiece for the Tau army. And I think this deserves to go into It Looks Cool. Just because it's got no arms and nobody likes the fact that it's got no arms. It's just a walking bunker. And it sort of loses that appeal that the rest of the Tau range has. Is that it's a big mech, whereas this isn't really which is a shame because it would be cool to have a massive sort of imperial knight i know you've got the riptide but again i think that suffers from age and realistically if they had the choice i think this is what the riptide should have looked like originally i just think the riptide is too blocky and it's not it you can't really get a good pose out of it so yeah that's why the storm that's why i feel like the storm surge looks cool but it's not a great representative of the actual tower range. There are better miniatures. The Gene Steeler Colt suffers the same fate as the Drukari. It's not a big enough range and it's not got many, they don't really have a centerpiece miniature. So this is this is the largest miniature they buy. Well, this is the largest sort of vehicle they have. Um, and I think this just has to go in, it looks cool. I think it'd be fun to paint, but again, it wouldn't be the first choice. And there are loads of great infantry models. I think the Gene Steeder Colt range has some of the nicest, most characterful infantry models in the 40k range. But there's no sort of centerpiece miniature or special character that stands out as being unique. So that's why I've, this is more like just a sort of a token miniature for that range. I'm really loving the miniatures that they've been bringing out for Necromunda. It's so sort of like the the gang that are trying to replicate their own sort of tyranids i think they're i think they're amazing i would love to see that sort of aesthetic brought into the gene steeler cult as well and sort of give them more of a sort of horror vibe the votan votan are, i think they missed a trick with the votan the design of the votan they're too they're too dwarfy for me they are literally just space dwarfs they've taken dwarfs from warhammer fantasy and they're putting them in Warhammer 40k. And I don't think I like that. What they should have done is, was actually just make a squat range. Because again, I'm going to refer to Necromunda, which has some of the most amazing miniatures ever. But I'm a really big fan of like the cyberpunk aesthetic. 
So I love the Necromunda range. But in that, you've got the squats. And I would have preferred to have a range that has their aesthetic, where they're sort of more Imperial Miners than Space Dwarfs. I understand why they've gone through the, this sort of more Celtic sort of theme. I just don't think sci-fi Celtic works. It doesn't it doesn't blend well with each other. They don't complement each other. I usually like to be positive, but their vehicles are ugly and I just wouldn't want to paint them. They're too blocky. They're very... It's like you'd get something from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle range back in the 90s. I feel like when they brought them out, they were too far removed from what people were expecting them to look like. Because I was all ready to sort of go all in and get this range because I was excited about the lore as well. But then I was started to see the miniatures. I, I just didn't like them. So I'll, I'm, they've, it's got to go into not first. So it's not it's going to go into not first because I just they don't really excite me and they're not really a range that I'm interested in collecting or painting. I probably will do some for the channel in the future. But for me personally, I would prefer I would have preferred them to be more like squats than sci-fi Celtic. Uh, the last miniature, I was umming and ahhing whether this was belongs on a 40k tier list or the Age of Sigma, but because you can use it in 40k, it does deserve a spot on this tier list. And that's Balakor. It's an amazing miniature, um, but for me it's it has to go into do it looks cool. Because again, it is just a big demon. Um, it's cool to own if you have a demon army or chaos army, but I, it's not a must have. I don't think it'd be very interesting to paint. So this is, this is it. Thank you very much everybody. So this is, is the tier list. This is the ranking of my personal, how I feel about these miniatures, which ones I would like to paint. The Harlequins, I really like the Harlequins, but again, there's nothing, there's no real unique units in there or characters that you could call a centerpiece. So that's why they're not really in this range. But if they were, I think they would go under great for painting just because they're very unique to other things in the Warhammer 40,000 range. So let me know what you think of this list. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of my choices. And I've also included the link to the tier list in the description so you can do it yourself. And make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video and why not join me for future live streams.